So I'm starting with about six pounds of clay. I'm just going to make sure it's fastened on to my bat. And then I'll just get my wheel going and I'll cone up and I can feel like it's already centered towards the top but it's not centered at the bottom so I'll push down and then do one more pull up and I'm pushing down with my top hand and I'm just holding the outside with this hand. And I'll bring it down to where that joggle is. And you can tell something's not centered because your hands are moving around. So now I'm just going to push these two hands in right here and right here at the bottom. And I'm going to cone that back up. And then I'm going to lock my hands together and I'm going to just push it back down. While I'm doing this, I'm just feeling for a if there's any bubbles, um, air pockets that I need to pop, you'll feel them towards the center. And they'll feel almost like a blister. And if you feel those, come back up and down until you don't feel them anymore. Because it will help you a lot to get rid of them now and not have to deal with them when it's in your wall. Okay, so now I'm going to open this. And the way I open a bowl, is I pretty much open it as if I'm actually going to throw it from the inside out. So I'm going to slow my wheel down a little bit. I'm going to just put my hands in the center of the wheel. And I'm just going to start pushing down Oops, with some water. And I'm going to stop. I want a pretty healthy um, bottom. I don't want it to be too far down. So I'll check with my needle tool. And I'm about right where I want to be, about half an inch. Now I'm going to just start forming that bowl shape on the inside. And this bowl is going to have kind of a narrow foot. It's not going to have a defined foot. It's a more contemporary bowl of the bowls that I throw. So I'm going to refine the shape a little bit more with my blue mud tools um, rib before I start pulling up. And then be the way I throw balls is I actually try to get all the height before I start pulling out the whip. So I'm going to just neaten everything up before I start working. Get my sponge and just clean up my wheel. And any extra clay that's on there off. And you get a neat working surface. And I'm going to just put a ridge in there. And I'm going to do a claw pull for my first height. And what I always tell my students is you're kind of going for almost like something that looks like a flower pot to begin with with a bowl. The inside will still look like a bowl, but the outside is going to look more like a flower pot until you get... Um, get your height. And if you feel anything weird, just kind of bring everything back in the line. And then I'm going to go just start doing pulls by putting my fingers down. And I'll try to pull this probably to like six to seven inches in height. The eventual height is probably going to be about four inches, but it'll be about 12 inches wide. I'm going to stop right when I get to the top and kind of keep that rim fatter there so when I stretch out it's not going to be too thin. And then I'm going to just dig in again and get the next amount out. I'm going to bring that clay from the bottom and come up. Again, stopping at the top of the rim. And then I'm going to do one more. And then we'll start shaping with our rib. So 
Let me see how tall I've gotten. I think I'm taller than six inches. Okay, so I've thrown this to, let's see where we are, where we are. We're about, no, actually we're about six inches, exactly. Okay, so now what I do is I do a rib to rib. So I use my blue rib inside with the, the round part um, that's going to be shaping the bowl. And then I will use, if you have a triangle tool that comes with your um, tool set, or I've got just this little doodad that somebody made me in a studio. Um, so I'm going to just kind of get, dig this in down here, and then I'm going to just start to shape the bowl. And I'm just pushing out from the inside with the blue rib, and I'm just doing a pull with those two. And it does two things. It kind of compresses the clay. And it gets any excess water off of it. And then I'll kind of see where I am as far as width out here. I'm about nine. I need to go to 12. So I'm probably going to do one more pull now that I've kind of tightened everything up with the rib. So I'm going to come down here because I really want that to be narrow down there. And I'm going to dig in. And I'm just going to bring that clay out. And I'm going to be stretching out at the same time with my fingers. If you feel it sticking at all, just get your sponge wet. Because you don't want your clay to twist. Okay, so now I've kind of got the shape set and I'm going to just start using my rib on the inside of the bowl to set the shape. So I'm going to kind of round it out at the bottom and I'm just holding my hand steady with my other fingers and my elbow is braced on my leg. And I'll just keep going back and forth with this until I kind of get the shape I want. And I'll kind of take my blue rib on the outside and I'll just kind of push it because of the shape I want this bowl to have. It's not really going to have a defined lip like a working bowl. It's, it's going to be one smooth, continuous line. Then I'll just round out the bottom a little bit. And I'm doing that last of all just because of the structure of the bowl. I don't want the bowl to collapse. I'm just rounding it out, We're going back and forth. And then I'll just finish the lip off and undercut it and let it dry and then I'll trim it. Okay, so the bowl that we threw is leather hard now and now we need to kind of trim it. And um, one of the things I always tell people is you want your pot to kind of float um, when it's done being trimmed. And so the first thing I would do is I would, if you're not used to um, trimming bowls, I would tell people to kind of look at where the plane meets the wall. And so like mine starts to go in right about there. And I'm, so I'm just gonna put my needle tool down there and I'm gonna heal that. And then when I turn my bowl over, I'll have a mark there where the pin tool came through and I can trim to that. I trim on a foam bat um, just because I like to trim all the way down to the edge and I really don't like using um, wadding because I think it tends to, a lot of times it'll be too soft and it makes your pot messy. And I don't think you need to get a gip and grip. So I'm just gonna center this and then um, I like to use a jar lid to kind of hold everything in place. so that it doesn't slip off the bat. So I'm just gonna start taking some clay off. And I first thing I do is I go to that pinhole mark that I made, and that'll be where the edge of my foot will be. 
And this bowl is gonna be a contemporary bowl, so it's not gonna actually have a defined foot. I'll go down all the way to the edge, and then I'll come back up. And this actually is a pretty good um, gauge to tell me how far in I wanna go. So I'm gonna go right to there, and then I'm gonna come down, and I'm just gonna keep taking some weight off of it. And once I've done a few passes, I'll pick it up and I'll test it to make sh to see if it's um, how heavy it is, whether I need to take more off or not. Because the bowls I throw tend to have a heavier section right here just for structure so that the bowl doesn't collapse when I'm throwing it. And I'm going to just pick it up and see how it feels. It feels pretty good to me. So I'm just gonna recenter it. Then I'm just gonna make a line where I want the interior of the foot to be, and then that's the part I'll trim out. And then I'm just gonna test it and see how much clay I have in there. And I'm just gonna start slowly taking some clay away. And I'll kind of refine that edge. and. I want the inside to kind of mimic the bowl shape, the inside of the foot, so it's going to kind of have a round to it. And if you notice, my hands are working together just like when I'm throwing, when I'm trimming. I've got kind of an L going between my thumb and my finger, so I kind of have this thumb, the two thumbs are connected. My pointer is on the middle of the bowl, and then my other pointer is holding the tool. And I do that whether I'm doing the outside or the inside. And I'll just stop. Like this feels, sounds like it's pretty, getting pretty, um, it's a high pitch to drum sound, so that means it's getting close and where this still sounds a little bit low, so I'm gonna just take a little bit more off of that. And then I'll just kind of refine that. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll just burnish the entire thing with a red rib because this pot is going to not be glazed on the outside. It's just gonna have a turquoise reactive glaze on the inside. I'm just gonna take my red rib, it's another mud tool rib, and I'm just holding it. And I'm just gonna push all of the grog back in because this clay does have some grog in it. And then, if it's not shiny enough, I'll, a lot of times I'll just take a um, bit of plastic bag that I use to wrap up my tools with, and um, I'll use that to do a final burnish on it, just so it will look pretty when the outside is not glazed. Taking a piece of plastic to it, get a little bit shinier, I'll just rip off a piece of plastic. I'll just wrap it around my th finger and I'll just kind of go down and burnish it. See how it's kind of getting a shine to it? And I do that on any pot, um, except for my agate work because it'll smear it, but I do it on any pot that I'm going to leave the exterior um, bare. Last thing I'm going to do is put my name stamp in it, and then I'll let it dry and fire it. And I actually let my bowls dry upside down, just like this, um, when they're drying on it. And I'll actually fire them upside down, too, because I feel like it um, reduces the warping. So this bowl, uh, we only want the glaze on the inside, so the entire back surface is masked, so you don't get any overspray on it. And then this is just a little wear board with some paper over it. Put it on here. Try to get it centered a little bit. 
because you're going to spin it and you want it to kind of be as um, about as centered as you can get it so that it spins reasonably well centered and then just hit it Better to do more than little than less. Now the rim is going to be wiped off, so I'm not worried about getting the rim. The um, I've been concentrating my spray along this edge because you can't really get down in there to spray directly on that edge. I guess if the bowl is big enough, I might be able to get in here if I'm really careful. Because the bowl's in motion, I'm not moving the sprayer. But I think that's, I think that's pretty much it going because Robin's egg settles. And so that looks a little rough right now, but what'll happen is, is you know, when it uh, flows, it'll smooth out. That'll be a really nice finish on the inside. So of course, we'll peel all the masking off, we'll wipe the rim before it goes in the kiln.